On the night of January 19th, 2011, the Baltimore County Fire Department requested assistance from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, ATF, Fire Research Laboratory to assist with determining the route of fire spread and the events that led to the firefighter mayday and subsequent line of duty death of firefighter Mark Falkenhan. Working closely with the post-incident analysis team, ATF fire protection engineers created a computer simulation of the Garden Apartment Building utilizing Fire Dynamics Simulator, FDS. All actions in the model, such as the breaking of windows and opening of doors, as well as observations, such as fire size and smoke conditions, are based on the master timeline of the fire and are synchronized real-time in the video and scene audio. Fire Dynamics Simulator FDS works by dividing a space or room into cubicle grid cells for calculation purposes. FDS then computes various computational fluid dynamic calculations for each grid cell to predict the movement of mass, energy, momentum, and species throughout a three-dimensional space. The Dowling Circle model consisted of 2,560,000 total grid cells that were each 10 centimeter cubes. The model was used to simulate a total elapsed real time of 27 and a half minutes beginning before the 911 call and ending just after flashover of the third floor and the firefighter mayday. The model was synchronized real time with the fire ground audio throughout the duration of the fire. While no fire model will exactly replicate a fire, the following model provides insight on the route of fire spread the rapid fire growth on the second and third levels, and the benefits of compartmentation on slowing fire spread. This video summary is intended to be used as an educational tool that provides insight on potential methods for preventing similar tragedies in the future. Please reference the printed ATF Fire Research Laboratory Engineering Report dated December 27, 2011 for details regarding the fire dynamic simulator model and the complete engineering analysis of this incident. 30 Dowling Circle is located approximately one mile from the first dispatch engine company. The building consists of a three-story garden apartment complex with brick construction and a truss supported roof. The building has three levels with a ground level labeled the terrace floor middle level labeled the second floor, and the top level labeled the third floor. The fire building contained a total of six apartments divided by a common enclosed stairwell in the center, with one apartment to the left and one to the right of the stairs. The address side of the building was labeled the Alpha side, with Bravo, Charlie, and Delta designating the other three sides in a clockwise fashion. Entry is gained through the front split-level stairwell by a common entrance door with individual doors leading to each apartment. Each apartment consists of two bedrooms, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a living and dining area. There are sliding doors leading to either a wood joist balcony on the second and third floors or a concrete patio for the terrace level apartments. The garden apartment building was attached to two similar garden apartment buildings, one on each side. The fire damage was isolated to 30 Dowling Circle, so the exposure buildings were not included in the computer fire model. The fire originated on the stovetop in apartment T2 on the terrace level, when the occupant left frying oil unattended on the stove. Baltimore County, 911, with the address of the emergency. 30 Dowling Circle, apartment T2 with the fire. Okay, I'm going to help. I'm going to get some information in that was 30. Oh, Ma'am, 30 Dowling Circle? Yes. Okay, is that off of Deanwood Road? Yes. What apartment are you in? T2. I'm sorry, T2? T2. Okay. What was on fire, oh. ma'am? Ma'am, what's on fire? Ma'am? Ma'am, what's on fire? Huh? What is on fire? The, the kitchen. The kitchen? What in the kitchen is on fire? Ma'am, what inside the kitchen is on fire? 
Huh? What is on fire in your kitchen? kitchen. What part of the kitchen? The, um, oh my God. Is it the stove or the table or no. the kitchen no. stove? Okay. All right, is it, are you able to turn off the power and close the door? I shall just. Ma'am, are you able to turn off the power and close the no. door? No, it's much higher. It's much higher. What is your name? Okay, I got help coming out there, okay? All right, I want everybody to evacuate to a safe place. Is anybody injured? Okay, but my cat. All right, I need you to get out of the apartment, okay? okay. okay. All right, anything does change or worse, and you call us back immediately. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Firebox 11-9, 30 Dowling Circle. Firebox 11-9, 10 people 11, Operation Control Comfort, 1 2 Boy 3, Engine 11, Engine 10, Engine 1, Engine 291, Truck 1, Truck 8, Twilight 293, current apartment fire. 30 Dowling Circle, apartment two Pump 2, plus you can deal with very much at end. It's Firebox 11 Comfort, 1 2 Boy 3. The model views on the right side of the screen show the movement of smoke and heat throughout the apartments and the stairwell. The bottom right image also shows the relative temperature and general flow path of the buoyancy driven fire gases throughout the building. The relatively small volume of the kitchen combined with its high fuel load and sufficient ventilation caused the kitchen to reach the flashover stage. The flames from the kitchen that ignited combustibles in the adjacent living and dining rooms. With both the rear slider and the front door open, there is sufficient ventilation to allow the T2 apartment to eventually become fully involved. The open front entrance door to the T2 apartment allowed for heated gases and smoke to enter the foyer area and the stairwell, making it untenable and blocking the primary means of egress for the occupants above the fire. Flames also extended out of the rear slider and ignited both the second and third level wooden balconies above. Okay, 11 to route. 11 Engine truck one and route. Engine 11 route. Engine one, truck one, engine 11, DC 90. Perhaps get your lights. Engine 11 arrived. We got a three story brick, guard department. We got smoke showing. Captain Miller off engine 11 B command had the next one, next engine in, grab the hydras right at Dean Wood and Dowling. Okay, engine 11 Well, units from command at this time, we're going to be doing an aggressive interior attack with the initial three quarter line. Engine 291, response check, 292, you calling your route? Yes, with three. 297 route was 3 Dispatch from command, I'm going limited command, we have rescue. Okay, engine 11, 1823. Dispatch from dispatch. Command from dispatch. Command from dispatch. Command from dispatch. Lot 303 in route. Lot 303, 1824. Sign 11, your message. Thanks, this is fire rescue. Oh, the in progress. Sign 11, 1824. Truck 1's arrived. Truck 1's arrived. Engine 8, 1825. I'm going to go ahead and have you in route, 1825. Engine 1's arrived. Engine 1, you're advising your arrival on the hydrant. Oh, okay, we'll start. Engine one from command. You think you can get a crew around back to side Charlie? 
Uh, there's no access uh, from this side. Engine one's okay. We'll take side, Charlie. Engine eight, your message. Engine eight, turn around on one two. I have him ready. Two point six. EMS one's in round from the beltway and see what's through. EMS one, have him ready. Two point six. Engine eleven, water coming. Dispatch, come come in. And repeat your own readable. Come in. Give me a second alarm. Command requesting second alarm, 1827. Command to the next engine in. Go past Dowling Drive and go to the alley beside Charlie of the apartment. You have access from side Charlie. Hey, Dave, this is Truck 8. You want us to go that way? Yeah, Truck 8. Mm -hmm. Repeat that, Dave. You want us to go, what, down Bellham? Mm -hmm. Bellham Woodway? Mm -hmm. Negative. There is an alley uh, just north of Greenwood. Down in Circle, you'll see the alley just to side trolley the apartment. All right, 10-4. I copy that message. We'll be following truck 8. I'll be taking water to the rear. Received. Oh, man. It's fully off fire. It is spreading to the balconies on side Charlie. Come on from truck 1. Command from truck one. Command from dispatch. Command from truck one. Command from dispatch. Go ahead, dispatch. Truck one, go ahead. Command from down, truck one, sir. Truck one, four, from side out. Truck 8 on side, Charlie, arrive. 292 has arrived. We're doing a split lay from the alley and Dean Wood. 292 for dispatch, have an arrow to complete my lay. Uh, what a pressure. You want me to charge it? 292, I have you arrive. Truck 8, I have you arrive. Then 55, I have you in route, 1830. Three of seven arrived as well. EMS one, have you arrived? I'm still in the route. I just want you to know I put EMS six um, on this call, so he may be a little bit closer to get there before I get. Okay, is EMS one, are you still responding? Yes. Sir. Okay, eighteen thirty one. Five three three, right? Five three three, eighteen thirty one. Thank you, 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 Dispatch from command, half the genie gas and route. That right, 1832. Come on, we need more pressure on our second line in the window. Command from dispatch. Command from dispatch. Command BG has a 30 minute or less ETA. Dispatch Major A is relay that message now, BG. Alright, one ground. Alright, one ground, have you in route. Engine 8, repeat your message, multiple units. 
I'll relay your message to BGE to expand. Okay, thanks, Engineer. Dispatch from Command Officer off 292 is going to be Division Charlie. Go ahead, Command Officer Division Officer 292 is Division Charlie. Engine 8 to rise. Engine 8, 1834. Hey, Paul, hold
Looking at 5D also. The FDS model was utilized as part of an overall engineering analysis of this tragic fire and allows for a better understanding of the events that led to the firefighter mayday and subsequent line of duty death. The post incident analysis team requested that two alternate modeling scenarios be conducted to explore the effects of compartmentation on fire and smoke spread. Two alternate computer models were conducted to explore how the ventilation flow paths 
through the stairwell would differ if the second and third level doors were shut after entering and leaving the apartments. The first alternative model run features the exact same input conditions as the actual model, except the third floor door is shut after opening. The second floor door remains open. The apartment entry doors from the stairwell were fire rated doors constructed of solid wood. As soon as the door is shut, the ventilation flow path from the stairwell into the apartment is blocked. With the third floor apartment door closed, the outlet of the ventilation flow path was blocked at the top of the stairs. Without a complete flow path, there wasn't sufficient oxygen flowing through the second floor apartment to support extended burning in the stairwell. Consequently, after flashover of the second floor, the flames in the stairwell only exist momentarily before consuming all available oxygen and becoming ventilation limited. Blocking the outlet of the flow path decreases the burning rate within the second floor apartment and stairwell. The stairwell becomes oxygen limited and doesn't support sustained flaming combustion by the third floor apartment door at the top of the stairs. Even with the front stairwell window vented, the upper volume of the stairwell near the third level apartment entry doors remains oxygen limited and the flames do not extend to the third level apartments via the stairwell. This is an FDS frame showing the oxygen limited conditions within the stairwell by the third level apartment doors. Note the relatively little flaming combustion as compared to the actual modeling scenario with both third level apartment doors open. For comparison purposes, this is an FDS frame of the actual model with both doors open at the same point in time as the previous image. Note the increased burning rate as compared to the ventilation limited conditions within the stairwell with the third floor apartment door shut as shown previously. The second alternative model run features the same input fire as the actual model, except the second floor door is shut after entering and leaving the apartment. The third floor door remains open. The model indicates that closing the second level apartment door prevents the flow of smoke, heat, and other products of combustion from entering the stairwell, thus preventing flashover of the stairwell and the third level. As long as the second floor entry door remains shut, the model indicates that conditions within the stairwell and the third floor remain tenable for firefighters, even if the third floor apartment entry door remains open.
Shutting the second level apartment door blocks the ventilation flow path and flame extension into the stairwell. Even with the third floor apartment door left open, the model indicates that the stairwell and the third floor remain tenable for firefighters. Flames will eventually extend from the third floor balcony into the apartment, however the escape routes through the stairwell and the front apartment windows are accessible. The impact of compartmentation on fire and smoke spread is evident by examining the post-fire damage throughout the structure. By closing apartment unit entrance doors and interior hollow corridors, one can slow or even block the ventilation flow path through the structure, thus significantly reducing the rate of fire spread. The following photos show the post-fire damage in all six apartments. Four of the six apartment doors were opened for the majority of the fire, and the relative difference in damage is evident. Interior hollow corridors also offer considerable protection against the spread of flames and smoke throughout the individual apartments. These doors were effectively used to protect the truck's crew after they executed the vent, enter, search technique and located the first victim. The left side hollow corridor in this photo was shut by search crews after removing a victim from the living room to the bedroom. The fire in the living room continued to spread and reached flashover a short time later. This is a scene photo of the bedroom on the other side of the hollow core door where the victim was removed. Note the lack of smoke and fire damage despite a fully developed fire on the other side of the door. A second scene photograph of the same bedroom showing the window where the vent enter search crew entered and exited the apartment. Taking the time to shut the hollow core door behind them blocked the flow path through the room, thus isolating the crew and the victim from the smoke and fire conditions in the hallway and living room. A final scene photograph depicting the damage to the living room in the same apartment. The hollow core bedroom door is located in the small hallway at the upper left of this photo. Shutting the door blocked the flow path and prevented flame extension from the fully developed fire in the living room from propagating into the bedroom. This FDS model was utilized as part of an overall engineering analysis to better understand the events that led to the firefighter mayday and subsequent line of duty death. The following three conclusions result from this analysis. Conclusion 1. The unidirectional flow of 600 degree Fahrenheit gases an excess of six miles an hour up the stairs resulted in a high rate of convective heat transfer to the firefighters, making initial fire attack down the stairs very difficult. Conclusion 2. The open apartment entry doors allowed the main stairwell to act as an open channel for fire and smoke spread between the second and third levels, resulting in flashover of the third level approximately 30 seconds after the second level. Conclusion 3. The model supported the scene observations and indicated that shutting the apartment entrance doors blocked the flow of buoyancy-driven fire gases, ultimately preventing fire extension to the third-level apartment via the stairwell. 
The conclusions from this analysis are intended to be reviewed by the post-incident analysis team to assist in the formation of recommendations to mitigate the danger associated with future fire incidents.